Welcome to module eight of Celebrating ADHD group coaching course. We are going to talk about problem solving skills, module eight. So just take a moment and tune in. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. The next inhale, just scan the body from head to toe. And then just check in with the mind. Just note what's there. And just put away any worries or concerns while we set our intention to get present to problem solving, developing the tools to do this. So why are we looking at this? Life is an endless series of problems. So problem solving skills are essential in our life. And it's important to address this as within ADHD, sometimes we may think that we don't have the skills to solve these problems. And it's not true. We do. We all have the skills. And it's about developing those skills to the best that we can. So before we start, normally we'll just want you to think about what you took on last week and what results did you get. Just make sure you really consider and celebrate those results. Just a reminder as why this support group is practical, it's interactive, it's goal orientated, and it's about celebrating our lives. We're already good enough just the way we are. And anything else is just a bonus. And that's what we're here to work on. So we're going to look at what is problem solving. We're going to look at key factors um, to make you aware of before we go into the six step process of problem solving that we can apply. And then there's an invitation to do the work. So what what is problem solving? What is problem solving? OK, well, we have in the middle, we have the problem and um, there's all these solutions, possible solutions that could be to the problem. Um, and problem solving, it's just solving that problem. Let's look at some of the definitions. So we've got here problem solving involves diagnosing the possible causes of a problem and developing a, an action plan that solves the problem. People use problem solving skills all the time, both in their personal and professional lives. It's not something that we can't can escape from problems. We all experience them. So problem solving is a methodical approach. It's a step-by-step -step approach to the challenge. It involves research, evaluation of possible options, making decision and reviewing the decisions on the affect behavior and cognition. You know, what actually works well. If we don't do this process, then we never know what works. It can be fun too. So that some of the tools um, that we require for this is creativity through brainstorming, thinking outside of the box, teamwork skills, communication skills, logical and analytical, critical thinking, 
which is follows a methodical approach. So it's about slowing down and going through that approach. It also involves high emotional intelligence. Decision making is key. And it's about building conviction and trusting in yourself to make the decision and following it through. So it's about integrity. So just take a moment and ponder on a problem that has arisen recently. And just write down or share what problem solving skills you applied to it. How do you currently solve problems? And be honest with yourself what you do. So now you've got a clear idea of some of the things that you do when problems arise. Now let's read this. It's, a problem is not a problem. A problem is not a problem. It's our approach towards the problem that's the primary cause of the problem. So it's our approach. It's the way that we deal with the problem. So let's look at the key factors to be mindful of before problem solving. So there's other things that get in the way. So factors to be mindful of are our feelings. Our feelings get in the way. We're going to look at problem solving relation in relation to time. We're going to look at responsibility truth, being dedicated to truth, willingness and op be open to challenges, and then applying the strengths that we have, the superpowers. So how do, fe how feelings, how do feelings get in the way? Well, we currently, if a problem arises, we have a feeling about it, which is a like or dislike, or maybe a neutral feeling. We're not even that bothered with kind of disillusioned about it. And that leads to emotions and the emotions that it leads to, if it's something that you dislike and is surrounded by guilt or shame, then you are going to drain your energy with those lower emotions. And they get in the way from actually doing and, and getting on with things procrastination sets in and we looked at this last week procrastination is the time thief it will steal your time we get distracted because we don't want to face the feeling we don't want to face the fear of failure for example so we put things off we don't want to face an upset, conflict, so we ignore it, hoping that they'll go away, but problems don't go away. So our feelings do get in the way. You need to be aware of that. Take a moment and ponder when a feeling got in the way of solving a problem and share with the group. So I can give you an example of uh, doing a household chore, maybe cleaning the bathroom. And the feeling is that I don't want to put my hand down the toilet. You have a feeling, a dislike. And then you may not get on with the chore of cleaning the toilet because you get stuck with this dislike. Or it might be a feeling that why should you be cleaning the toilet and not somebody else? Again, 
a fit another feeling or emotion gets in the way. So just a little excerpt from Rudolf Kipling about sort of how we address feelings really, but he's saying if you can meet triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters the same, then you're not going to be clinging on to triumph or clinging on to disaster. So you're not going to let those feelings get in, in the way. Let's look at how problem solving relates to time, because this is a key, key issue. So as the, the, the example um, was given that um, it's a guy in his, his late 30s, just couldn't fix things. He just said, called himself an idiot. He said, I'm not mechanically minded. I cannot fix things. Goes out for a walk. As he gets back, sees his next door neighbor and his next door neighbor's there fixing the lawnmower. So he's intrigued and curious and says, oh, how do you do this? How do you fix things like that? And the guy just turned around and said simply, you have to have time. And that's when it hit him that he didn't give enough time to fixing problems. So when we don't do that, we're going to set ourselves up for failure. And that will reinforce the feeling that I'm an idiot. I'm not mechanically minded. I can't do this. And it goes round and round into that circle. So we don't allow enough time to solve the problem. We want this instant fix. We live in a world where we can one click of a button, we can go to Amazon and we get something delivered that day. This is an instant fix, instant gratification. Nobody wants to put things off or face the unpleasant tasks to delay gratification. So this is a key issue. If we don't allow the time, we set ourselves up for failure. If we just become deluded and think that problems are going to go away on their own accord, then we just allow procrastination to take our time. We allow it to come in. So we give the allowance to it. We choose, we create it. We create the world we live in. So take a moment to ponder on the last time you solved a problem. This could be a small thing, the computer, knowing how to fix something in Microsoft Windows or something big. Just think about how much time did you give it? So give yourself the time to do the problem solving. This is a kind of act of compassion and being kind to yourself because you're human. It takes time. If you break it down step by step, then you're going to get, it's going to lead to a better result. Right, next factor to take into account is responsibility. What does it mean to take responsibility? So taking responsibility is getting present to this. Nobody is coming, said the Buddha. Nobody's coming to save you. Get present to this. It's up to you to take charge. 
it's up to you to create the life you want to live. Nobody's coming. This essentially means get out of this victim mindset. Stop being an emotional beggar. So what does it actually mean to take responsibility? Well, it's ownership. It's owning the problem. The very experienced motorbike rider took this statement on board. He said, everything that happens to me is my fault. He says, if he has that attitude when riding the bike, then he becomes more mindful and takes responsibility for his life and his safety. Be careful not to use the fault into self-blame, but just look at it from a rea reality is that, you know, if there's a cause and effect, there's a consequence to that. And if you've taken that action, then there's a consequence. So admit your, to your mistakes rather than blaming others. Enough of blaming others. It doesn't lead anywhere to blame others other than to destructive, toxic relationships. Take charge of your own feelings and emotions. Start to investigate where they come from. Is it something that happened when you were a child that you're holding on to? Learn to fail or fail to learn. You have to take responsibility for your learning and applying it to your life. Introduce behavioral change now. If you don't, you're going to get the same results. You might be happy with the results you're getting. If you are, then great. If you're not, then look at what you can do differently to get a different result. Be accountable for your actions. Face the consequences, the unpleasantness. Take a moment, take a moment to ponder on a problem that has arisen recently. Just ask yourself, did you take full responsibility for it? And what was the resulting impact if you did or if you didn't? So I'll give you an example from my life that something goes missing in the house, say so remote controller for the, uh, the TV, and it's a problem because we want to use the TV. So frequently what I used to do is not avoid responsibility say it's, it's not me it's not me it wasn't me it wasn't me but the fact is is that I have committed to keeping the house tidy so I'm out of integrity because the that is not happening if we can't find things that we need in the house so without taking full responsibility, 
I don't face the fact that I'm disorganized and messy. It's somebody else's problem. Now I take full responsibility for it, take the unpleasantness on board and make changes to declutter the house so we can find things. So it's also about taking the responsibility for your own growth and learning because, and it's what, what we say to ourselves that can delay um, problems and addressing things. And if, we th if you think you can't, or if you think you can, you are right. This is Henry Ford. So if you think you can't do something, then you can't. No, no, you can't. If you think you can't problem solve, you can't problem solve. But if you think you can problem solve, you can problem solve. It's a mindset issue. Train the mind, control the mind with mindfulness. Be dedicated to the truth. This is another element. We all tell lies. There's not one person that hasn't told a lie, white lie, black lie. It's about being dedicated to the truth. So the truth is that difficult things are going to happen. We're going to have problems. Life is full of a series of problems. We can't change that but we can change the way we respond. So are you dedicated to the truth? Are you honest with yourself? Are you willing to face the defects in your problem solving? Are you willing to delay gratification? Are you willing to take responsibility for your mistakes and take constructive criticism on board? Are you keen to move from an emotional beggar victim mindset to one of empowerment? These are questions for you to, to answer. And just be hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth. So Scott Peck wrote a magnificent book called The Road Less Traveled. And he says, we lie, of course, not only to others, but to ourselves, we lie. And these lies can be potent and destructive, especially the ones associated with love. So we may say to ourselves, our parents really loved us, or we really love our children. And we've got to actually look at the reality of that. Is it true? Is it happening all the time? That our, did our parents really love us all the time? In reality, they probably didn't. Sometimes we were a bit difficult to live with. Annoying teenagers. Um, did they love us then? And the same with really, do we really love our children? Because the politically correct thing is to say yes, but then sometimes we don't. They demand a lot of attention. They take us away from some of the things that we love to do. It's about facing up to that and admitting it. So take a moment to think about the last lie that you told yourself and what impact it had on your life. It might be that you're saying, I don't lie to myself, which might be a lie in itself. So just take a moment to, to think about that. I can share from my own experience is the last lie I told myself was that I don't need to lose weight. And the reality is, is during lockdown, I have put a bit of extra weight on. And 
I just told myself the lie. I said, no, it's okay. I haven't. But the reality is that I have. So the impact that it has is that I ignore the problem and I don't face how to evaluate to lose weight and to do those things. Um, and that impacts on relationships, the partner I'm with, because I've agreed to with him that I would lose the weight. And, um, and I'm out of integrity. So when I'm out of integrity, it drains my energy. That's the impact it has on my life. So the other thing to be aware of is, are you open to challenges? Are you open to these problem solvings? Would you like to solve the problems? So do you see problems as stumbling blocks or stepping stones? How do you see them? How do you experience problems in your life? Are you willing to do the work and face you? And to open up yourself to find out what your can't is. If you're saying to yourself, I can't do this, why are you saying that you can't? What are you avoiding? Are you still curious? Do you ask what if? So this is a great poem. Isn't it strange how princes and kings and clowns that caper in the sawdust rings and common people like you and me are builders for eternity? Each is given a list of rules, a shapeless mass, a bag of tools, and each must fashion ere life is flown, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. Take a moment, think about what problem or challenge you can open yourself up to this week. Maybe use the template to um, problem solve that problem or challenge. So if we say we change the way that we see problems, we change the mindset. And we start to see problems as opportunities as opposed to um, a disadvantage. A problem unsolved is a potential untapped. So there's a potential in every problem. Every cloud has a silver lining. You know, there's these sayings are there to open you up to the fact that there's a lot of positive things about problems. So are we applying the strengths of ADHD brains to problem solving? Because you know, it can become overwhelming with those overpowering emotions. But once we got on top of those, we have an untapped potential to solve problems. And here's why. We have the ability to think out of the box. We can see things that maybe the next person cannot see. We're able to evaluate different, different solutions. It's a great skill for problem solving. You know, anyone that runs an advertising agency, you want to employ people with ADHD. If you don't, then you're limiting the creativity and the ideas that you have for your clients. 
the creativity is another major strength. The ability to hyper-focus is another strength. You can focus on that problem and just get that problem done. Keep going till you get it done. So take a moment to think about your skills and just think about a time when you basically came up with an idea that nobody else thought about ever and what the impact of that was. So I can I can share from my own experience is that I used to organize a lot of events, um, used to have an airfield and one of those events that was held every year was a firework evening. So I came up with the idea of a Moroccan theme one year and we had belly dancers in the cafe on a firework evening and Moroccan drummers. Who would come up with that idea for a firework party? Someone with ADHD, yeah. And the result, well, everyone had a fantastic time. They really enjoyed it. So it brought joy to a, a lot of people and um, it was a very innovative event, full of life. So look, let's look at, we all want to run, we all want to escape from our neurosis. If we live on the run from them now, how will we ever know the rest? Because if we face the neurosis associated with ADHD, there's so much potential, so much that we can offer to the world. And it's about empowering ourselves to do that. Um, let's face it. So here's a six step process that we can apply to problem solving. So we're going to go through each one. First step is to identify the problem, then do your own research, look for possible solutions, make a decision, put the decision into action, and then await the results and evaluate the results. So identifying the problem is a really important stage because we need to write down the problem. We have to be clear about what the problem is and then share it with others if you're working in the group. And then you can set the intention for what you're trying to do about the problem, the goal. What is the goal? Then break down the tasks that are involved. And then determine what the root cause, what you think the root cause is of the problem. And then we're going to test it out. So it could be a physical, it could be human, it could be organizational causes. Just put down what, what you think it is and then get present to the consequences of not addressing the problem head on. So anything that has shape, we can break. So if you define the problem, you can break it down into chunks. But if the problem floats like smoke, you just get played. So you're just going to, it's going to become elusive and you're never actually going to get to the, the source of it. So stay, step two, do your own research. Make the time for the research and look for the solutions. You know, what do the best people do in this field to solve the problem that you're in? What's worked well before? Is there anyone that you can ask that's experienced the same thing? Arrange a brainstorming session, keep an open mind, come up with lots of possible solutions and use different research tools, books, websites, podcasts, etc. There's so many access to different, emo different information out there. And play with it because trying to find a solution to your problem is a magical journey. And 
you can arrive at a beautiful and utterly different problem free point, leaving your original problem and its solution aside forever. So three, you get to this choice point. It's about making a decision. So you evaluate all the options. You use a decision making model, the Boston matrix, pros and cons, the crossroads model, weighing up which way to go. Apply the what if scenario. What if I go down this route, then this route? Use critical thinking skills. Ask key questions. I mean, is that, can this solution be put in, in implemented in the time frame? Is it practical? Is it helpful? Is it of benefit? Is it cost effective? Can it adapt to conditions that evolve and change? Is it risky? Is it beneficial to you, the team and the company? Think of it from all, all the angles, which we are brilliant at doing. Think logically and you have had a chance to solve a problem. Reacting emotionally to it prolongs and worsens your dilemma. So the emotions aren't involved in it. Take the emotions out of the problem so solving process. Then step four, put the decision into action. So it's about actioning the decision. So thinking about, well, who's going to actually be responsible for implementation? Is it you? Um, what time frame? What are the objective? What are the exact actions that actually need to be taken to place? And test it along the way. Just be open to feedback to which door you're going to go through. Um, yeah, this is key. I mean, I'd rather attempt to do something great and fail then attempt nothing and succeed. So then five, it's about awaiting the results, okay? To celebrate the fact that you've addressed the problem. That's the first thing. Um, you took action, so reward yourself. This is the time, just reward yourself. Be mindful of thoughts about creating the stories. What if this, oh, that. Yeah, just be mindful of what, what your thinking process is. Allow yourself to say, I've done what I've done and I haven't done what I haven't done. And let go. And just be patient on the results. Be grateful for the problem and the ability that you have to solve it. Because at least we're alive to have them. <laughs> You don't get problems when you're dead. You don't need to do problem solving when you're dead. You're dead. So let's be grateful for our problems and start to listen within into our hearts and treat it as a stepping stone, something that we can learn from and grow. Final step, very key point, this step is evaluating the results. Devote the time to evaluate the results. So look at the feedback that you've got. Is it positive, negative? What's going on? What happened after you implemented the changes? What worked? What didn't work? What did your solution improve? And just analyze the actions that have made and what impact they made and did it address the root cause of the issue if not then we go through the whole process again what have you learned from the experience what worked well and to celebrate it is key reinforce the fact that you can problem solve because if you can't solve problems then you are the problem. You are the problem, period. It's a bit harsh, but it's true. If you can't solve problems, then you are the problem, period. Address it. Face you. 
Here's the invitation to do the work. So, revisit your ability to solve problems. You can do it. See the problems as an opportunity. Use the template for problem solving and choose three problems this week and apply it to it. Get present to the reality of your life and the problems. Practice self-compassion and give yourself the time to do it is the key, the key point is give yourself the time to problem solve one thing at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself with too many things. Just take one problem, break it down and follow the process. You can do it. So if you have any questions about the content of this, this module, please uh, get in touch and we can talk through it. Here's some of the resources that you can look at. So there's some useful videos on problem solving, some TED Talks. There's also books of the science of lateral thinking critical thinking, the McKinsey mind. So McKinsey is a top consultancy company. Probably worth listening to those that pro solve problems all the time. And useful apps. Yeah, there's packed fighting laziness. <laughs> um, can't wake up, attitude. Yeah, check, check, check those out, um, the resources and do the work. And at the end of the day, we are what we think. All that we arise, arises with our thoughts. And with our thoughts, we make the world. So what world are you going to create with regards to problem solving this week? It's up to you. Nobody's coming. But we are in it together. So reach out to the community through the discussion forum, the tribe member, Facebook, Instagram. And let's connect as a group. Because together we can achieve a lot more. <laughs>